So Bog Fables has a lot of quests, and I, Phantom A, am going to try and rank them all. Why? Because I can! We're going to categorize each quest by a few factors, namely how quickly they can be done, how difficult they are, what the rewards are for all of them, you get the idea. And of course, this is all my opinion, so keep that in mind if you have any arguments to make. With all that said, let us begin. Now, in my Meadows tier list, I went from top to bottom covering Meadows in the tier they appear in. Here though, I want to organize a little differently and go on a chapter by chapter basis. Starting with Chapter 2. The Innkeeper's In Reviewed Required Quest is first, and well, you talk to the Innkeeper, you sleep, talk to her a second time, enjoy your free honey drop, and that's it. It can be nice if you wanted a free heal and item, but you're going to get very little else of value out of it. Alternatively, you can also just not review her hotel at all and treat it like a charity. And if ever you come back, she'll still have that smile on her face waiting for her review. You see kids, it's better to receive than to give. Just look at that smile. A handy heal for speedrunners at least, but 9 berries is not a lot to pay anyway. Easy, but not really something you'll be bending over backwards to complete. Chuck's quest, I Want a New Taste, comes up afterwards and is a really easy quest to complete. Take a mushroom and a fit egg to Chuck and you'll get the atom he wants, a hearty breakfast. Feed it to him and he'll give you your metal, Mighty Pebble, enabling the Pebble Toss skill for Cobble to use when equipped. It's an okay enough move that only costs 1 TP, and it gives Cobble a means of attacking airborne foes long before he learns Understrike in Chapter 4. Nothing special though, but it is an option. By the way, I'm doing a challenge run of this game where I played through the entire adventure using only Pebble Toss to do any damage. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing down below. It's something you really have to see to believe. The item you deliver to him also in general really isn't difficult to make, so you have nothing to really lose to so stop on by and pick this metal up. The only drawback is that this move is still really weak, but it's good enough to be situational. Third is Todd and his request, Lost Toy. All you have to do is venture into the cave leading into the golden path, cut some grass, and find his dotted ball waiting to be picked back up. Return it to him and you will receive one of two sleep resistance medals. These are useful if you find yourself struggling to block attacks that can inflict sleep, which quite a few do exist in Chapter 2. There's also this one particular boss in Chapter 3, Mother Chomper. It's only a 50% chance though, and you need to have both on one bug to get a full 100%, but if you're not worried about blocks, it also protects you from the after effects of items like Drowsy Cake, so you can't be put to sleep. For this reason, this quest is overall situational, though to be honest, it's also tricky to find. Awful's beauty comes from our good pal Reeves. Throughout your adventure, you can find bad bugs scattered across Megaria, and delivering any you find to him earns you a generous sum of 35 berries for each bad bug which, sadly enough, is more than Ellison the second gives you for the first two artifacts. Some would say she's cheap, but considering that V is always receiving the reward, I don't think it'd be a stretch to imagine the reward we get is actually stashed away somewhere with V for her savings. Anyway, the bad books can be found on top of Todd's house in the Ant Kingdom, in John's room in the Bee Kingdom Hive, and the Tarantula Witcher's Tower on the far left of the room. It's an easy quest that pays well, but you're going to be finding it rather lengthy to complete as you can't complete the quest until after Chapter 3. But still, it's a good reward, and you can start getting rewards as early as Chapter 2, so hey, take what you can get. Compared to the next quest at least, it's a lot better. Brooke has a quest as well that goes by the name Lost Books. It's a quest that can be started as early as Chapter 2, and I hate it. It can be fun to find all these books scattered across Megaria, but... It's a borderline pointless quest on repeat playthroughs as all you get is a crystal berry, which you likely will have enough of by the time you can even get it, provided you're sharp and don't miss anything. And there are some more books that are locked behind quests, some being extremely late into the game. And with how difficult it is to complete this quest with how far and wide these books are located and scattered, most of you watching this video, I can guarantee, are not going to do it more than once. For that reason, I can say that it exists, but nothing more. And sorry to say, but this egghead has a quest from Ali titled, Book Return. Pick up the late book he has and drop it off at the library with either Libran or Brooke, then return and talk to Ali again to receive 15 berries and a lore book. The extra berries are appreciated, as it at least gives this quest some genuine value, but you're unlikely to really care aside from if the library is just on the way. Compared to Rave's 35 berries, yeah. The extra lore book would be handy if books were a valuable reward, but call me uncultured, I don't see the value. An easy quest, but one that really isn't worth your time. 
Similarly, Edel has an errand for you to run for a parts delivery. Take this package to his girlfriend Div in Bagaria Pier and net yourself a crazy prepared medal, preventing first strikes from enemies in the overworld. If nothing else, it can make for good filler while wandering about if you're worried about taking damage or trying to avoid first strikes, but I feel it necessary to mention also that menu codes have some bearing on this because, well, you have to accept this quest before you can rank up for Ruigi. But since that would have locked behind the whole game mechanic, that seems very unfair. Crazy Prepared is still only situational at best as a reward, only being useful for overworld enemies, and has absolutely zero value at all in boss battles, so it's largely unspectacular. We'll be reaching some actually challenging quests now with the Golden Sediment Technician's Trouble Cable Car Bodyguard. Once you reach Golden Sediment and have this tunnel opened up, you can enter into a gauntlet of three fights of Golden Sediment enemies. The first fight is two acornlings, the second fight is a numbnail and two midges, and the third and last fight has two weevils and a numbnail. Your reward is an initially underwhelming 10 berries, but you also get one of two Super Block Plus medals. As for the quest itself, it can be pretty hard when fought as soon as possible, if not resource consuming, especially since you cannot heal in between fights unless you lose at any time. However, this does make the gauntlet more bearable if you're struggling, so feeding yourself some items to restore in between fights is always an option. The reward is also pretty good. Super Block Plus is one of the best defensive medals in the game, especially in higher difficulties, since almost every enemy can do damage to anyone without added defense, even with Super Blocks. And the added synergy thanks to the other medals like Spiky Bod cannot be understated either. You can hear more about that in my medals tier list, which I'll share at the end of this video. As for the quest itself, it's got a good reward, but doing it as soon as possible will either cost you or be tough. Fabri's quest is a breeze. She has a hydration crisis. All you have to do is deliver her three clear waters and you'll have yourself a heavy sleeper medal. If you have the space for it, you can give three clear waters for free just by cutting down the bush in front of the Golden Path entrance and resetting the room. It's by no means expensive though and clear waters can be purchased cheaply from Golden Settlement. As for the reward, it's actually pretty good. The bug with this equip can't be woken up outside of items, the turn duration expiring, or the game forcing your sleepiness to expire as an anti-soft luck failsafe. To counter this though, they heal thrice as quickly as they normally do, and the damage taken is reduced by half. It's a good defensive medal in its own right, but the fact that it's also practically free to acquire makes this a great reward to receive. Following her is Bombay with the quest, Drop My Hat. This hat can be found in the west section of Golden Sentiment in the corner of the Aphid Farm. Deliver to him, and you pick up one of my personal favorite medals, Favorite One. This quest is extremely easy and quick to do, and the medal you get is a great medal for building up charge. Give it to Kabu, Taunt, use a skill to protect him like Bubble Shield Light, or items and metal combos that give him invincibility like Shock Trooper and Agaric Shrooms, you'll be slamming bosses like a Looney Tunes character in a live action movie. This is an easily dubbed great reward that is extremely easy to snag. In the next part of this series, we will be talking a lot about food, both invaluable items and the people that love to eat, as well as quite a few boss fights that open up after you finish Chapter 2, including Monster Scarlet and Brood Mother. I tell you to subscribe if you wanted to see the next part when it comes out, but you should already know that by now. In any case, if you want more tierless action, if you can even call it that, check this video out on the screen right now about my defensive medals tier list for Bug Fables the Everlasting Sapling. Because the more videos of mine that you watch, the more popular my channel becomes, and the more exposure Bug Fables can get. But most importantly, the more value you receive. And yes, my favorite kind of cheese is mozzarella.